Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm um, doing good. Uh, we've got a Dear John letter today that just might save someone's life. Okay, it's probably not going to save anybody's life, but it is of utmost importance that we uh, give some good advice because it kind of almost creeps me out a little bit. The question does. So uh, some stuff going on that when we get to it, I guess, you know, we'll uh, don't ever use the John and Heidi show Dear John letters in place of 911, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> just want to put that out there. And it's not, I don't think it's dire, but boy, it's kind of creepy. Uh, also have a quote for today, and this is from Joyce Meyer. She says, a number two pencil and a dream can take you anywhere. I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about a pen or <laughs> a marker or a crayon? <laughs> Maybe not. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday. John and Heidi. If you're a business owner trying to do your own website, maybe it's time to get help. Or if you don't even have a website, it's definitely time for help. It's 2018. This internet thing is here to stay. At 49bydesign.com, we offer a simple plan to get you online for just $49 a month with no setup fee. This includes a website with the hosting and domain name included in the price. We have larger packages available, but this will get you online so people can find you in 2018. We're affordable by design at 49bydesign.com. That's 49bydesign.com. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Uh, I thought you'd never ask. It's Thursday, the 21st day of June. It's National Arizona Day. It's also National Day of the Gong. Remember the Gong Show? I do. Did you like that? Did you watch that at all? I did watch that. Uh, I didn't watch it much. One of the things I remember from that is the comedian with the bag over his head. Yeah. Do we ever find out who that was? Or is he still unknown? I believe he's still unknown. All right. Also, National Seashell Day, National Selfie Day, National Skate uh, Go Skateboarding Day, National Daylight Appreciation Day. It's the longest day of the year. That's why they call it that. Okay. It's also National Peaches and Cream Day, National Dump the Pump Day, and uh, today is officially the day that summer begins. So, all of those things happening on this, I believe they call it Summer Solstice, the 21st day of June. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All-American Dish, your Dish authorized retailer now. 800-818-3967. 800-818-3967. That's 800-818-3967. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. John and Heidi. Coming up, we've got your brain on drugs. But first, what a bizarre story. I didn't really know where to put this story, so here's where it landed. Oh, by the way, uh, I want to get back to playing Is It a Prison or Is It a Vineyard? The other day, I found a list of like 101 vineyards. I'm still looking for a list of prisons. They're all very, very much prison names, like, you know, such and such state penitentiary. I'm like, right. I don't think she's going to believe that's a vineyard. So if you got a good list of prisons you might want to send that to me uh but here we go israel has banned a donor to a sperm bank he has currently fathered 32 children and they say you're done no more no more deposits we're done here uh his name is ari nagel he's known as the sperminator <laughs> that is just why would they tell him he can't anymore? apparently they just say we've had enough of you go away i don't know if i have no idea but apparently <laughs> he's a really good customer so so far, 32 children. Reminds me of a movie with uh, Vince Vaughn. What Vince was that Vaughn. called? The uh, Delivery Man. The Delivery Man, yeah, It was yeah. a good movie. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday. John and Heidi. This time of year, there are many parties, weddings, cookouts, and other events that often include alcohol. If you're drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. The Addiction Hope and Helpline wants to help. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, there's a toll-free number you can call, 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline, 1-800-438-0380, 1-800-438-0380. 
And this is your brain on drugs. South Carolina is where we head for this one. A man there was arrested after a game of beer pong led to a shooting early Saturday morning. Whoa. Yeah, Somerville police said the incident began after 23-year-old Timothy Ganey dared a woman to kiss him and expose her breastuses during a beer oh. pong game. Yeah, that's probably not a good plan. Unclear if the unidentified woman went through with the dare. Sounds like probably not. But an unidentified 21-year-old man was reportedly seen consoling the woman when Ganey confronted him. Uh, the argument began between the two men, and then it went outside, and that's when he pounded on his car window. The man tried to drive off, but a car attempted to block the exit. Shots were fired. A vehicle chase ensued. Oh, my gosh. The unidentified man reportedly returned fire at the car, chasing him before driving into a ditch. He reportedly fled the vehicle. Ganey was identified as one of the people in the other car that opened fire. He was charged with attempted murder. So, what a weird story. Right? And all over a game of beer pong and some attractive lady. And that actually kind of ties into our Dear John letter today. A little okay. bit. Not not a ton, but a little bit. Uh, guys, leave the ladies alone. If she wasn't interested, just walk away. Leave her alone. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying this from one dude to another. If she's not interested, leave her alone. You don't chase her down and shoot the guy she's with. Right. That's a bad idea. What do right. you think's going to happen there? She's going to go, okay, Nothing good. Well, now I'm interested in you. Yeah. No. But this is what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, a little screen. Former Real Housewives of New York cast member Aviva Drescher says the show's producers would go out of their way to booze up the cast before filming. <laughs> I wonder why they would do that. Really? I bet it made the show a whole lot more oh, I'm interesting. I'm sure. Of course it did. And. But they said that, you know, they're not always drunk. It was just while they were filming. They're like, hey, let's celebrate. Everybody has some drinks. Another one. You need some shots. Shots right. over here. Shots over there. Okay. Camera's rolling. Okay. Now let's get let's get going. Wow. So apparently it wasn't always like that. It's just, you know, when the cameras were rolling, so were the drinks. Liza Minnelli is in the news. Now, I haven't really I heard, haven't heard anything, anything about her, her forever. No. Well, she is quietly selling her Andy Warhol paintings. And she's got it by appointment only. So if you want to get a picture of a soup can or something, Heidi, we should reach out to Liza. I always liked could. Andy Warhol. I did stuff. too. Um, we, there's no way we could afford it. I can't even afford uh, no. a postcard of Andy Warhol's no. paintings. But uh, if you're interested, I have a link in the show notes and you can reach out to her and maybe uh, get hooked up with a painting or something. So there you go. A couple of things from the big screen and a couple of things from the little screen on big screen, little screen on the John and Heidi show. John and Heidi. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-719-5601. 800-719-5601. That's 800-719-5601. Now your scoop of the day, courtesy of 80sinthesand.com. Sad story here, 23-foot python. Now let's just pause for a second and think how big that is. That's huge. That's like if it was on one side of the garage, it would go all the way across to the other side and there would be snake left over. I mean, that's a big, big snake. 23-foot python swallowed a woman alive in Indonesia on Saturday. I've got a link to the story if you want to read all the details on that. Wow. Wow. Uh, bizarre story, but very happy ending here. A three-year-old girl in Missouri wandered into a cornfield at night and stayed out there for 12 hours. She got lost, but Aww. she's safe and sound because her dog stayed with her the entire time and kept her warm. How old was she? She is just three. Oh, my gosh. So three years old. So, like, we've got a nephew Once again, two. dogs, uh, dogs, dogs yeah. are amazing. I think that's really cool. Uh, last week, a North Carolina school receptionist stunned students on their last day of school when she belted out the Etta James classic, at oh, last. Yeah, I like that song. Have you seen the video of this? No. She did a really good job. She changed the words to make it fit. You know, the at last, we're all leaving for the summer. It was really, really clever. Uh, saying it over the PA system, Regina Ballard, the songstress, posted the video on Facebook, and the clip went viral. When she wrote in her post, I love my job, y'all, but I look forward to summers when I can spend time with my grands and family. So here it is, at last. And I've got a link to that video. It is just, I think it's really good. I love that it's song. It's really neat. It is a good song. I love that song. Um, over here, survey reveals the obvious. <laughs> we use our printers at work 
for personal use. No way. Well, yeah, duh. Who does that? Exactly. Never. Okay, it happens all the time. Survey found 60% of us, I don't know why I said it funny like that, 60% of us, there we go, use the workplace printer to print personal emails. I don't do that. Why, do, why would you need a personal email printed? Have you ever printed a personal email? Well, we've printed emails before. We've needed to. I don't think I've ever printed a personal email. What, like to hold as a hostage for somebody? I had the evidence right here in this personal email. I don't think I've ever done that. Or if there's like an address on that email that, oh, I you, that. you know, you or need to print out. Or a coupon for pizza. Or... I think right? I've done those. <laughs> I guess that would be a personal See? email. Okay, color photos, yeah. news articles, purchase confirmations, maps, and even, here's my favorite on the list that you use the office printer for resumes oh that just seems a little low doesn't it it does but you know i remember there was a guy that uh they the office copy machine quit working and when they were able to get it unbroken when they got it fixed there was a a resume of his that came out of it so he broke it while he was making copies of his resume that would be bad yeah i bet he didn't have a job no he didn't he was i think he was actually gone already by the time that happened so uh, back to this. A man in England died of self-inflicted stab wounds while trying to demonstrate his new stab-proof vest. Oh, that's... <laughs> wow. I just don't understand what you're doing there, people. <laughs> the good news is at least that happened in England because uh, it sounds to me like something that would happen here. I mean, right. we do dumb stuff like that all the time. And again, I'm sad to say... Oh, that I shouldn't that's... say it's good it happened anywhere because it's not. It's sad that it happened anywhere, but... <sighs> bad. Hey, if you think having your brain fire on all cylinders for 16 to 18 hours a day is a good thing, researchers say you're wrong. They say getting enough sleep and taking regular breaks from work are brain uh, to, uh, are very important to your brain. I think I said some of that right. <laughs> I, <laughs> you my, need more rest. My brain took a break in the middle of that sentence. Researcher at the University of Rochester, and this is a person by the name of Macon Nergard, wants to remind us that we sleep to clean our brains. The researcher found that during sleep, the space between brain cells increases by 60% in mice. This allows cerebral spinal fluid in the animal's brain to flow 10 times faster than when it's awake. So there you go. It's important to get some sleep. This has been your Scoop of the Day. I'm going to go take a nap. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Do you have ideas for t-shirt designs, but you don't have a clue how to print them? Or maybe you'd like to have t-shirts and coffee mugs available to buy online with your business logo printed on them. There's a website that makes it easy. We set ours up in about 10 minutes. There's no sign-up fee, no minimum orders, no monthly fees. It's just a really easy way to put some cool items online for sale. And you get paid every time somebody buys them. You don't have to print or ship anything. Just sign up, upload your designs, and then let people know where they can get your cool stuff. More details available at Radiosavings.com. That's Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. And it's time right now for Dear Dear John John Letters. Letters. Dear John, John. I've been listening for a while now and love the show. I almost didn't send this because it sounds a little conceited, which is not me at all. But I've had this guy at work ask me out three or four times over the last month. We don't work in the same department. I don't really know him. I've been polite in saying that I'm not interested. Then last week, I saw him hanging out in the parking lot by my car. I avoided going out for as long as I could, but I had plans with some friends, so I finally had to go out. He asked me again, and he was kind of rude when I told him, I'm really just not looking for anyone in my life right now. He said, I'm talking about a drink. I'm not asking you to marry me. Was, I, was I wrong to say it that way? Does he automatically deserve a date because he asked for one? How do I politely tell him to leave me alone? I'm a little concerned that he knows which car is mine. I'm wondering what else he knows. What should I do? Signed, single and content. This is a little creepy for me. Yeah, that's super creepy. And the thing that I would do maybe, first of all, see if you know anybody that knows him. Find out if he's stable. I mean, if he flew off the handle at you because you have told him no, uh, that would kind of creep me out a little bit. Yeah. And if he knows what you drive, but you guys don't, you don't work in the same department you don't really know each other he just saw you and thought you were cute and now he won't leave you alone i'm not saying that it's to the point where you need to get your employer involved but you know if it persists i would certainly get my employer involved yeah and just it say, seems it seems dangerous to me yeah and 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 just say hey i don't know what's going on this guy and again i understand where you're coming from you said i almost didn't even talk to you guys about it because i feel conceited even saying this i understand that but here's the thing if there are people that are pursuing you and there are people that are you know that are 
and I guess in this situation, this person who's not taking the hint when you're telling him that, hey, I'm not interested, it, that's not conceded at all. You know, um, I just think it's really sad that it's even happening. So, Heidi, how would you have responded? Would there be something different? I guess it'd be easy for you to say, hey, dude, I'm married. Uh, but if you were single and some guy was was asking you out, what is the proper way? What is the right way to, to say I'm just not interested? You just say no. Say, I am not attracted to you at all. Go away. You're a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use those words, quote for quote. I'm just saying, word for word, that might get you in a little trouble. Um, one of the things I would do, like I said, I would certainly do my homework on him. He has done his homework on you. He knows what you drive. I would at least find out if the dude is stable because hopefully he is. Maybe he's just a super nice guy and he thought maybe by asking you numerous times, cause you know, they say, Hey, if you ever fall off the horse, get back on, uh, don't take no for an answer. This is a time gentlemen that you do take no for an answer. If you're asking somebody out and they're not interested, leave them alone. Mm-hmm. Same for ladies. Ladies, if you're asking a guy out and he's not interested, leave him alone. I remember our son had a young lady that was asking him out and she was very persistent. He's like, I'm not interested. I mean, mm-hmm. not at all. Um, so if if somebody is interested in you and you're not interested in them, that doesn't make you conceited. So, I, again, I, I feel bad that she even felt like she had to say that in right. this letter. So, again, personally, uh, I don't think I'd get it to the point where you need a restraining order yet. Well, no, uh, it's not restraining order material, but you no. do need to be a little more forceful with this guy because he's clearly not taking your nice hints. So yeah. you need to be blunt. And, and it kind of sounds like hopefully it might all be done now because, you know, again, he kind of blew up a little bit. Um, so hopefully that that's the end of it. But if it's not, maybe what you do is just talk to some of the people you work with that do work in your cubicle and say, hey, would you mind walking with me to my car? Uh, yeah. I just kind of, I kind of want to make, and I would do that for a couple of days at least. Um, and, and just again, maybe make sure that he's not following you. Like you said, he knows what you drive. What else does he know? Does he know where you live? Mm-hmm. If he shows up at your house, do not answer the door. Call the police. He yeah. was not invited. You've told him numerous times that I'm not interested. If he shows up, that would do not let him in. That would be a terrible idea. That's where I would call the police and say, this dude's a stalker right. because at that point, he crossed the line. He's a stalker. So, again, sad to hear you're even in this situation. Uh, do you have any advice that I maybe we didn't cover here? Or? If if he comes to your car, position yourself in a way where your knee would hit square where it needs to hit, and mm. maybe then he'll get the hint and okay. leave you alone. So no more hints? Might not hurt to have a weapon of some kind as okay. well. So and it, maybe some mace. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't come to that. This has been your Dear John letter for this Thursday. If you've got a Dear John letter you'd like to submit for next week, you can do that through our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show, or right on our website, which is John and Heidi Show dot com. John and Heidi. If you're a business owner, you should consider using radio. Radio is a powerful tool. Over 90% of us listen to the radio each week. Imagine if this ad was talking about your business, helping you hit your goals. We can help. We can also create a fun jingle, too, to get people singing your song. When you put words to music, they're nine times more memorable, and that makes radio work even better. Learn more at RadioReallyWorks.com. Radio jingles to help you get better results with the money you're already spending. RadioReallyWorks.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? In every episode of Seinfeld, you see this somewhere. What was it? Do you remember? Superman. Yes, Superman is correct. Uh, Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The Spanish word esposa means what? Spouse. What else does it mean? The plural esposas means wives or handcuffs. (laughs) Oh. I don't understand why that would be the same word. I do. (laughs) So the Spanish word esposa is wife. Esposas is both wives and handcuffs. A couple of fun facts for you right there on a Thursday. John and Heidi. If you're a business owner trying to do your own website, maybe it's time to get help. Or if you don't even have a website, it's definitely time for help. It's 2018. This internet thing is here to stay. At 49bydesign.com, we offer a simple plan to get you online for just $49 a month with no setup fee. This includes a website with a hosting and domain name included in the price. We have larger packages available, but this will get you online so people can find you in 2018. We're affordable by design at 49bydesign.com. That's 49bydesign.com. 
Time now for the grandiloquent word of the day. And today's word is turtiform. T-U-R-D-I-F-O-R-M. What do you think turtiform means, Heidi? <laughs> it sounds to me like a product name for, for you know, like those Play-Doh things that you could squish no. your Play-Doh in no. and make shapes, but that's for not, something else. That's not what it is. Are you sure? I'm positive. That would be an interesting, you, interesting product. You see the infomercial already. <laughs> the turtiform is not that. It is like a thrust uh, any of the songbirds of the family Turdidae, or whatever that is, from the Latin turtus or thrush. So it's a bird. It's actually a bird. Oh. Turtiform. <laughs> I like my, my yeah. description better. It says, the befeathered dress bestowed an uncannily turtiform aspect upon the perevene songstress. Turtiform. I don't think I said any of the words right in that. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they help me. They give me a little uh, pronunciator up here for the word, but... The rest of the sentence, no, there's no help, so I probably got it all wrong. T-U-R-D-I-F-O-R-M, Turtiform, today's <laughs> grandiloquent word. John and Heidi. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-719-5601. 800-719-5601. That's 800-719-5601. Time now for some weird news on a Thursday. The Knoxville City Council uh, unanimously approved a measure to allow goat grazing on private property. Currently, a city ordinance did not allow that. Livestock, goats, or anything like it on property to uh, curb brush and plants. However, it's been allowed on city property for a while. They said, we've seen goats clear up public parks like Fort Dickerson and uh, a nature center as well, uh, IM's Nature Center. Now, private property owners can apply for a permit to get goats, which could be beneficial to the environment. It says here, goats are very environmentally responsible. People think they're cute. People like them, and they're effective in in what they... What? What they do. Apparently, they missed a word. In what they do. I'm think, thinking that's probably what it is. They love to eat privet, kudas, and poison ivy. The ordinance change must be approved. There was a second reading on Tuesday of this week, and I have no idea if it passed or not. I got this story sent to me like Friday of last week, so mm. there you go. This has been some weird news on a Thursday. John and Heidi. Now your moment of duh. Henry George Weaver was arrested in Pennsylvania for defecating on another man during a road rage incident. Oh, wow. This is just getting that out of control. That escalated quickly. Police in Pennsylvania say Weaver was driving to a doctor's appointment when a man cut in front of him, at which point they got out of their cars and began arguing. Weaver says the argument upset his irritable bowel syndrome, and he had no choice but to go then and there, so he <laughs> attempted to go on the other man. The driver got back in his vehicle and drove off. <laughs> Weaver received a citation when police arrived. What in the world? This is the just the weirdest. People are so I just don't bizarre. get it. I just don't understand. Why would you try to do that? Um, do you think you won that argument? <laughs> I won. <laughs> he drove off. No, you didn't win. We're talking about you, Mr. Weaver. You're making national news for doing something that really wasn't a good idea, Henry George Weaver. Make sure that name is attached to that. So if you ever try to attempt that on the side of the road, that's it's called a weaver. That's doing a weaver. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to do a weaver. All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This time of year, there are many parties, weddings, cookouts, and other events that often include alcohol. If you're drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. The Addiction Hope and Helpline wants to help. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, there's a toll-free number you can call, 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline, 1-800-438-0380, 1-800-438-0380. And Heidi. Tis time now for Fake News or Florida. And Heidi, I've got my fake news and my real news stacked in front of me here. Okay. Do you think you'll get it right today? I don't know. Okay. Uh, We shall see. Yesterday she struck out. I missed them both. All right. We'll try 
Here we go. Fake news or Florida? A Florida grandmother was arrested for stealing her granddaughter's crib and toys to sell for beer money. Fake news oh, or Florida? Probably Florida. No, it was fake news. Oh. Yeah, I found a typo in there. It said, I could definitely see somebody doing that, yeah, though. Yeah, <laughs> so don't do that. Please don't do that. That was fake news. Thank goodness. How about this one? A Florida man was arrested after he paid for one donut but stole two others at Walmart. Fake news or Florida? Florida. That is true. That truly happened. It was at a Walmart in, uh, where is it here? Somewhere it says it on here. St. Augustine, Florida. 52-year-old Peter Paul Vig was charged with first-degree misdemeanor for trespassing and a second-degree misdemeanor for petty theft. They say that he, officers arrived for a shoplifting call. They learned that he took three donuts but only paid for one. He took the items, passed all points of sale, was stopped by Walmart loss prevention. Walmart claims they suffered a financial loss of $1.16. <laughs> According to the arrest affidavit, the suspect was also trespassing on the property following an incident that occurred on November the 23rd. Here's the thing that I would tell you right now. If I was there, I would have just paid for that dude's donuts. I mean, it's sad that he was arrested for $1.16. I understand. But still, What he did was theft. wrong. Theft is theft. He, what he did was wrong. But if the dude is just an old guy that's hungry... I feel, is that really what it was? Well, it doesn't say if he was 52. I mean, if he paid for one, well, there he had you go. some money. I'm glad that he paid for the one. I wish he would have paid for all of them. I wish we weren't even talking about this. I wonder how really he got sad. them. I wonder if he did like the self-checkout thing. I don't And know. maybe just made a mistake because he, that would be easy enough to do. Especially you if donut. you're old and you don't understand technology. two donuts, one stuffed in each cheek. He's eating them. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. All I know is this has been another episode of Fake News or Florida. I've got a link to the story if you want to read it. On our show notes page at johnandheidyshow.com. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part they can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. Time now for some good news. I like to wrap things up around here with good news. And today we really need good news. I mean, there was a lot of weird stuff going on on this program. <laughs> I mean, just a lot of weird stuff. Uh, here's a good story. Our good news comes your way courtesy of Odiva, the monthly subscription service that is just for the ladies. All of the details at radiosavings.com. Here's the good news. A shoplifter in Toronto was caught stealing clothing at a Walmart in Toronto. But when the police officer, they call him Constable there, the Constable, Niran Jayesson, arrived to arrest this young man, he was moved by the incident. It's an 18-year-old boy, and his story was that I'm getting these clothes so I can go get a job. I have an interview. So this officer decided, you know what? If it's okay with Walmart, I'd like to just pay for his clothes and, and let him go get this job. So the officer paid for the teenager's How clothes. How awesome is that? And they didn't press charges. They said, that's fine. If we're getting paid, that's all good. This guy should have been there for that donut we talked about. Right? <laughs> so anyway, the teen story, uh, he was stealing a dress shirt and a tie and some socks for a job interview. Constable Jason learned days later that he, this young man, got the job. Oh. So there you go. I'm, I'm happy that he got the job. Now, here's the thing. Don't steal clothes for any reason. That's that's not a good thing. If you would have looked around and asked somebody for help, I guarantee you somebody would have helped yeah, you. Yeah, somebody had some you could have borrowed. Or... I remember I worked at a radio station where there was a young man that started in sales. And when he started there, he didn't have many dress clothes. You know, he, he was wearing like the same jacket every day. And I had gained some weight, so I had a bunch of dress clothes that didn't fit me, and I gave them to him. I was because he said, "Man, I need to get some other clothes." And I said, "What size are you?" And and I, I'm a little taller than he was, so the sleeves were a little long. But but I was like, you know what? They don't fit me anyway. So if you ask, I guarantee you, there's somebody in your life. There's somebody out there somewhere. Maybe not even in your life, but if you just put a post on Facebook saying, hey, I've got this great opportunity. I've got a job interview. Can somebody help me so I don't look like a bum going to the interview? Somebody right. would help you. Don't steal. Bad idea. But what a great officer. Awesome officer showing up and saving the day. And that's why it became today's good news. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi.
Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. I've got a link to the story here and many other fun things in our show notes for today, Thursday, the 21st day of June at johnandheidyshow.com. Time now for the bonus break on the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. we got a special guest joining us right now, Captain Dave Marciano. And you may know that name if you're a fan of uh, the television program Wicked Tuna. You absolutely know it. How are you doing, sir? Good, thank you. Yourself? Very good. Uh, Sunday is kind of a special day. We've got the 100th episode in addition to that, it's also the the season premiere or the season finale as well, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is. Yep, yep. When when you guys started working on this program a long time ago, a hundred episodes ago, did you think that it would last for a hundred episodes? No, no, not in a million years. I, I really didn't. Um, look, I thought my job was boring, and they said, "Oh, we're going to film you doing your job, basically." And um, you know, first words out of my mouth is, "Is there a check involved?" And they said, "Yep." <laughs> so, you know, I'm a commercial fisherman. I said, sign me up, whatever it is. Now, that's got to be kind of cool because usually when you guys go out, you only get paid if you catch fish. So it's got to be kind of nice knowing that, hey, I'm getting paid to have this guy stand here with a camera, too, whether I catch a fish or not. <laughs> exactly. That, you know, and, and again, as, as a working guy, as a commercial fisherman, you know, in, in, in the very beginning, it wasn't a whole lot of money. But at the end of the season, it was like getting the check for, you know, three or four fish we didn't catch. So it was... A bonus check for, you know, three or four weeks pay for me and the crew. That's really cool. Again, uh, National, Geog- National Geographic Channel's Wicked Tuna. Uh, this is the 100th episode. Now, this is also kind of a special episode. Instead of a one-hour episode, you said it's a 90-minute episode? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, because there's a lot going on. It's a 100th episode. And in this episode, there's kind of a big reveal that's coming. Um you know, and it, and it pertains to the Southern show, Wicked Tuna the North South, which happens to start airing. So the premiere of our spin-off show, North South, starts the following Sunday, July 1st at 9 p.m. And there's a big reveal for that season that's tied into this very last season. Very nice. So the, the spin-off show starts next weekend, but it's this weekend is the, the season finale for this one. Yes. Very nice. And and National Geographic's Wicked Tuna has become a very popular program. Uh, when you guys are out just, you know, going to the store and doing things, do you have people come over and recognize you when you're out and about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not too overwhelming. I mean, let's face it, we're not bad, um, you know, mainstream. I'm not Brad Pitt or nothing, but, <laughs> you know, the show is very popular. And it, you know, it's very humbling to have um, so many people come up and recognize you and, and, you know, there are moments where we get a little bit of tired of it, um, and you wish you could shut it off. But, look, the bottom is because, um, because of people like that who watch, it's been an opportunity of a lifetime for, you know, myself and my kids, uh, you know, and my crew. So, you know, we're very happy to take a minute and say hello. And the thing that's neat is you just mentioned that your kids, your son Joe also works with you and, and your daughter Angelica. What is it like to have them as your deckhand and your first mate on the on the boat and have the world watching you work together as a family? Well, like, that's just pretty cool, right? Because, number one, I'm fortunate to do it. Um, and, you know, having everybody watch like that, you know, the, the audience has been very supportive of seeing that, you know, but it's not without its challenges. You know, um, I definitely think it's changed, you know, the way, like, you look at my kids, right? I'm, I'm sure some of my older crewmen in the past who worked with me, um, you know, when my kids were too young to do that, would probably say, geez, you're awful easy on those guys, you know, but they're my kids, right? And, you know, maybe, you know, I might have been a little more of a, a hard uh, you know, a little, a little more hard on some of the rest of the guys over the years. But like my kids seem to get a break, they would say. Well, one of the things that you happen to have, a, a distinction that many of the other people that we've had a chance to talk to over the years have not had, is you're also the survivor of a shipwreck. That's not something that everybody can say. And I'm reading here that it took only a, a, about a half hour for your boat to sink. What happened and, and how did that all come about? Sure, sure. That was on uh, the first boat I owned uh, when I entered the fishing industry. I owned that boat for a little over a decade. It was the name of the boat was Angelica Joseph. And, you know, again, that was my first boat. So when you enter the fishing game, you don't have the money to, you know, buy the boat you always wanted. You 
you had to buy a boat that you can afford and has the right paperwork that allows you to fish. And that boat, she was a great old boat. I owned it for a decade. She was a 38-foot uh, wooden uh, boat, uh, oak frames with mahogany planks. And one of those planks opened up and let go. And you know, that was a 40-year-old wood boat. So, you know, we had to take care of her, but she caught a lot of fish. And like the day we lost her, you know, we were lugging home, you know, about 10,000 pounds of fish that was worth, you know, falling here. We catch them in New England. You know, they were worth probably about a buck a pound, a buck 20 a pound at the time. So we were having a great day. We are in the middle of having a great week and, um, you know, doing really well in the fishing. And unfortunately that day it was a little rough. Nothing we've seen much rougher weather. But one of the planks of the boat let go. And, you know, it kind of peeled back and the boat filled with water real fast. So what what advice would you give to somebody listening that thinks, you know, I think that looks like a lot of fun. I would like to be a fisherman. I'm assuming it probably is fun, but it's a lot of hard work as well. What advice do you give somebody who watches what you guys do and says, I want to try that? Um, look, times have changed. When I graduated high school, and this is like a lot of industries in this country, you can make, um, you know, good money fishing just by being willing to work up a sweat. Right, and, and, and break your back, you know, and, and it's not unique to the industry. You hear it a lot with carpenters and bricklayers and, you know, a lot of industries. But these days, times have changed, you know, so you really want to get, um, you know, the most successful guys have kind of a, a dual career. They have something else they're doing as well as fishing. Because this day and age, the way, you know, the regulatory climate has changed, uh, we're much stricter now on, you know, we don't allow unlimited fishing anymore. We, you know, with all the fish we target, uh, you know, we, we have to be responsible about how we harvest. And, you know, for guys like me, being responsible means, you know, there's times when we can, can't fish when we wish we really could because we need the money, you know. So, you know, my advice is, you know, if you're in school, finish school, get that college degree. That's what both my kids did. And they're still looking for kind of a career, uh, and they'll fill in their year with some fishing when the money's good. Well, that's great advice. Absolutely. Now, the the television program is coming up on Sunday, this Sunday. And if people would like to tune in, what time does the show start on Sunday? Yes, sir. It's 9 9 p.m. on the National Geographic Channel for our special 100th episode. And it's a 90-minute episode. All right. And, it's uh, again, it's the season finale for Season 7. Holy cow. Season 7, 100th episode. And it should be a whole lot of fun. And then next weekend, you said you've got kind of the premiere of uh, something new. Let's talk uh, briefly about what that's called and, and what we can see there next weekend. Sure. That's Wicked Tudor North and South. And that's kind of the spinoff show. That was Season 5 that we filmed um, down there in the Outer Banks, North Carolina. And, you know, there's a big reveal that comes out, the final episode up here that plays into that first episode, um, you know, for the North South show. And it's going to be a great season down there as well. Very nice. Well, Captain Dave, thank you so much for taking time to chat with us. All right. Thank you for having me. Again, Captain Dave Marciano. And you can tune in this Sunday on the National Geographic Channel. We're going to throw a link in our show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show.